Space, something so distant yet so accessible to look at, billions of stars forming weird constellations. Our ancestors gave them funny names because they care. We don't. Stars are becoming less and less visible as we pollute our atmosphere with light and our brains with TikTok. If you lived your whole life in a big city, there is a chance you never saw a real starry night. View that captivated human imaginations for millennia is becoming more distant and we make it less and less and less visible. Fortunately, there are places where you can still experience this beauty and I happen to live in such a place. This is a story of a young boy that got a telescope for his birthday and 15 years later got his bachelor title by turning all of his passions into one project, a star tracking system. But that wasn't just a project, it was a final project at my university and it was a race. Me and my time management skills versus the time itself. Because I started the project so late that I only had 4 months to go from nothing to a complete and working system. And the deadline was approaching very, very fast. These are the images from James Webb and Hubble Space Telescopes, two of the most powerful telescopes ever built. But some of them can be captured here on Earth with just a camera, tripod and a lens. It's not easy as there are multiple problems with that. We have weather, we have light pollution, rotation of the Earth and probably some more that I forgot. So sure you can wait for a good weather, you can go to a dark place, but you cannot just disable Earth rotation, fortunately. So for that we need a special device. And of course, such devices exist. We have equatorial mounts that are quite heavy and meant for the telescopes. They use two axes where one of them is like aligned with the Earth's rotation axis. And then by rotating just on this axis, you can track any object on the night sky. They are quite hard to set up, heavy and not really meant for small cameras. And then we have Aldas mounts that are way smaller and also use two axes, but none of them is aligned with Earth's rotation axis, so they can track any object on the sky, but they suffer from a thing called field rotation. You can track any deep sky object, but it will slowly rotate in your frame. So my idea was simple, solving the field rotation problem by adding another axis to the Altas mount and that way creating a three axis star tracking system. This project was my final project at a university. In Poland we call that an engineering project if you translate it directly, because it is a project you need to make to get your engineering degree. That is called bachelor degree in English. Because of that my approach was a bit different and a lot more formal than what I usually do here on my YouTube channel. First stage was a lot of research, finding some articles and solutions to the problem online, all of that had to be written in my thesis. If you want to read about the research, you can find a link to my complete thesis in the description. It's just open sourced on GitHub. You can read it all, it's about 70 pages, quite long, but I hope also quite interesting. The research helped me to understand some of the astrophotography problems and available solutions a bit more, but still I wasn't able to find a product similar to what I wanted to create. So I started with pen and paper to sketch out some of my ideas. I also did some basic calculations to make sure that the motors I'm going to use will hold the camera without any problems. Rough sketches slowly turned into more detailed drawings of each part and inside of the star tracker. I even designed the logo and the PCB layout just to make things easier later when I jump into CAD design. Sketching on paper is always a great beginning for any project as it is much easier and faster to brainstorm the main concept and idea without being focused on dimensions and cut design. I totally recommend starting that way, even if you are not good at drawing. Cut design of course goes much quicker with the paper sketches and if you have detailed views of your parts it's just so easy to copy them into CAD and it's really enjoyable. The project mechanics and all the parts were designed in Fusion 360 from Autodesk. This is my favorite CAD program that's just super easy to use and you can find there all the options you will need to build almost anything. There is also still room for improvement there, before you start making any parts. If you feel like something worked on paper and doesn't really work in CAD, or won't work in manufacturing, you can always easily redraw it or modify it directly in the design. 
I often prefer to redraw the part as then I'm able to notice even more problems and solve them before 3D printing anything. This is kind of like prototyping, but it's pure imagination based. Great exercise to think about how your parts will work together without having them in your hands. This project was designed as an open source and easy to build star tracking system for astrophotography. The goal, as with any other project of mine, was to create something interesting that can be built by people all around the world. Requirements for that are always the parts that should be easy to buy everywhere and manufacturing methods that are cheap and popular. With that in mind, I designed the project to be mostly 3D printed with the possibility of redesigning some parts to be laser cut in the future. Everything printed with PLA on Ender 3. I did so much work with the cut and my drawings that assembly was just super smooth and easy. I really enjoyed it. Here are some clips of that. The project is quite easy to assemble and if you just take a look at some pictures, I think you will easily assemble it and also the list of parts will help you a lot. If there will be an interest in this project, I might create an instruction as well that will guide you step by step how to assemble the Star Tracker. But of course, not everything was perfectly designed on the first try. The motor was blocking the movement on one of the axes, so I moved it to the other side of the arm. The arms were a bit too long and because of that flexible and there were some minor problems with tolerances, so after fixing that and reassembling, I had version 2. Ready for testing, at least mechanically. Now let's look at electronics and software. When I have been working on the project, there were big problems with the supply chain and short of electronic components, especially microcontrollers. But there was one always available, cheap and programmable in Python, RP2040 from Raspberry Pi that was used in Pipico, which I played with and I liked a lot, so I decided to design my PCB around this. And fortunately, the RP2040 documentation is really incredible and so detailed that designing your own custom PCB with this microcontroller is a great experience. The only problem is that external memory chip is needed and it was quite expensive to buy. But I was able to just buy a module with this chip, desolder it and solder to my PCB. I saved a lot of money on shipping and quite a lot of time that way. PCB was designed in KiCad and made by JLC PCB. And JLC PCB is the sponsor of this video. I have been cooperating with JLC PCB for years and I'm really happy with them. They offer great PCBs at great prices and also a lot of different services. They can make flexible PCBs, multiple layer PCBs, stencils and assembly of your PCB. You can also choose custom color at no additional price. Their online calculator is super easy to use and you can get instant pricing for your orders. These are the PCBs that they have made for me for the Star Tracker project and the black solder mask looks really really good with the white legend everything is just so crisp including the logo, the text and all the symbols. If you need PCBs for your project I totally recommend JLC PCB. Thanks a lot for sponsoring. Soldering went really smoothly even though RP2040 has very small pins underneath. After checking everything under a microscope and then with the multimeter it looked fine so I just uploaded the first test script and it worked on the first try. I was really happy to see the PCB working. I started the project so late that it just had to work otherwise it would be hard to finish my thesis on time. The code was written in micro python and I divided it into multiple files to make it easier to understand and use. The desktop side of the software that communicates with the control board through serial sends the commands and performs all the necessary calculations was also written in Python. Using almost the same programming language for both desktop and embedded was a very nice experience. I also just love Python. Everything is public on GitHub, if you want to take a look, link is in the description. As the deadline was approaching very fast, I wanted to start testing the system, but the weather was bad most of the time. It was December in Poland, so that was to be expected. For that reason, the first Test was performed indoors with Stellarium software on my computer. Of course, that is not a real simulation, but I just thought it might be a nice way to simply test if everything rotates properly. Of course, it wasn't. It was rotating in exactly the opposite direction than it should. And I just fixed that by adding a minus sign that I missed in my code. And now it looks like everything works as it should. The first real outside test was performed at a village in Poland where light pollution is not as big as it is in the city where I used to live at the time. That was the setup a simple table, star tracker with DSLR, my computer and a 3S LiPo battery to power the system. 
And now we can look at the test images. To prove that the system works, I took images with the very same settings and the camera was mounted on the tracker, but for the first test you will see the tracking was disabled and for the second one enabled. The ISO, exposure time, f-stop and lens exactly the same. It was just the tracking that was on or off. So here is the first one. As you can see, the stars are blurred and we can see what is called star trails. The stars are not points, but rather lines. In the corner, you can see a piece of a building. It's perfectly sharp because the camera was stationary. On the second picture, we don't really see star trails and stars are much closer to points. The building in the corner is blurred because the camera was rotating. Why the stars are not perfect points? Because of non-ideal alignment with the North Star, with the Earth's rotation axis. Test number two was performed in a bigger city where I lived at the time. Light pollution is a serious problem there, but I still wanted to try. This time I pushed the exposure time to 600 seconds, so 10 minutes, which is quite extreme, but I really wanted to see what will be the difference in the images. Definitely not ideal points, but much closer to that. And as I mentioned, 10 minutes of exposure for this kind of setup with a basic camera and lens is quite extreme. It is much better to take a lot more of short exposures rather than one long exposure, as it is easier to remove noise from the images that way. And here are some images and clips from tests I performed later when playing with the system. I think I like the time of the most, as you can see the stars being stationary in the frame and the earth rotates. It gives you a completely different perspective on the view of the night sky. There was one goal I really wanted to achieve and that was taking a nice image of the Andromeda galaxy with my system and that unfortunately still didn't happen. It may sound easy, but it is not. You need to take a lot of images and stack them together with special software. Andromeda is quite low in the sky at night where I live, so it's best to capture it in the middle of winter or summer, probably not before releasing this video, but I hope to capture the image soon and I will definitely share it on my social media, so follow me on Instagram and YouTube. When writing the thesis, I have been looking for a video that would guide me at least a bit on how to write it properly, but there was nothing useful on the internet, so I would like to share with you some information here, maybe it will be helpful. Just a note that I did my thesis at Silesian University of Technology in Poland in Gliwice city. The rules and requirements might be completely different if you are studying at a different university and different country. I wrote my thesis in LaTeX with Overleaf. It is much easier to create a nice looking document right here and you don't need to worry that everything will stop working in a world at some point. There is a lot of resources online, so it's easy to learn. It definitely looks intimidating at first glance, but it is not that hard to use. And once you are done, you won't regret it. In total, my thesis is over 60 pages long, which is a lot. Usually these are much shorter. I also included a lot of images and drawings to show alternative solutions, my assembly, electronics and test pictures. And finally, the grade. I got 5 for my project, the highest grade possible, and in the end for my bachelor degree I was graded 5 as well, which was a big surprise for me. Maybe let's leave my thoughts on studying and university out of this video. I would prefer to end it with a positive vibe and nice reflections about the project. I am currently at the last semester of my master's degree in data science and as my final project and master thesis I decided to continue working on this project. The most important goal is to create an auto calibration procedure and then determine the accuracy of it. Because the problem of determining the accuracy is quite complex, I want to try to do it with a neural network that will be trained on a synthetic dataset of generated images of the stars. At some point I will definitely make a video about that, but right now I have no idea what I'm going to do and how to do it properly. The good thing is I felt exactly the same way when starting with the Star Tracker project and in the end everything worked as I wanted it to. So I'm sure it will happen again with a lot of hard work and some happy making which I also wish to you. <laughs>